In this video, we'll talk about row reduction, which is the process of using row operations to put a matrix into echelon form, or reduced echelon form. So first, let's remind ourselves what it means for a matrix to be in echelon form. So we have these three conditions. Uh, first, all rows of all zeros, if there are any, have to be below any other rows. The second condition is that each leading entry of a row is in a column that's to the right of the leading entry of the row above it. And then finally, all entries in a column below a leading entry have to be all zeros. Now we're going to take our original matrix and get it into that echelon form using one or more of these row operations, which are the scaling operation, multiplying a row by a non-zero constant, what we call the replacement operation, which is replacing a row by the sum of itself and a multiple of another row, and the swapping operation, which is swapping the positions of two rows. So let's work through an example here. So remember that what we want is for the leading entry of each row to be to the right of the leading entry in the row above it. So right now, we, right at the beginning, we run into a little bit of a problem because the leading entry in the first row and the leading entry in the second row are backwards. We really want the leading, of the leading entry of the second row to be to the right of the leading entry of the first row. So we're going to fix that problem by swapping the first two rows. So we're going to swap row 1 and row 2. And that's going to get us negative 2, 2, 0, 3, 2, and 0, 1, 2, 0, negative 1. And then at the bottom we have 2, 8, 20, 0, 6. Now we could have swapped row 1 and row 3. That would also have gotten us the leading entry in the first row in the first position. And that goes to show you that um, we can do these process, this row reduction process in different ways, and we might end up with different echelon form depending on the order in which we do these operations. Now another one of our criteria said that the, all of the entries in the column below a leading entry have to be all zeros. And so in this first column, we need to make this 2, we need to make that be a 0. We've already got a 0 in the second row first column, but we need there to be a 0 in the third row first column. So we're going to do that using the replacement operation. So we're going to replace row 3 by row 3 plus row 1. Because if we add those two rows together, that'll give us a 0 in that first position. We don't really care what happens in the rest of the positions. We just want to make sure we get that 0 underneath that first leading entry. So when we do that, that doesn't change the first row. Negative 2, 2, 0, 3, 2. The second row looks the way we want. It's got a 0 there where we want it, so 0, 1, 2, negative 1. And now in the third row, we've added the first row in the third row, so we get a 0. 2 plus 8 is 10. 0 plus 20 is 20. 3 plus 0 is 3. And 2 plus 6 is 8. And so there's our uh, matrix at the moment. So in the first leading entry, we've got what we want. We've got zeros below that first leading entry. Now let's look at our second leading entry. In the second row, it is to the right of the leading entry of the row above it, so that's good. But now we need to make sure that there's zeros below that leading entry. So we need to make that 10 be a zero. So we're going to again use the replacement operation. So this time we're going to replace row 3. Now there's a couple different ways that we could do this. We could multiply row 1 by negative 5 and add, which would the negative 5 times the 2 would be a minus 10, plus the 10 would give us a zero. But then the problem with that is that that would wreck this zero that we worked so hard to create there. So we really want to use the leading entries of the row that, in the column that we're working on to get the zeros in the rest of that column. So we really want to use that one, that leading entry, to get rid of that 10. Because since there's already a zero in the first position of that row, any replacement operation involving row 3 and row 2 will preserve those zeros. So we want to replace row 3 by row 3 plus negative 10 times row 2. So that's not going to change the first row. We're still going to have negative 2, 2, 0, 3, 2. It's not going to change the second row. We still have 0, 1, 2, 0, negative 1. But now we're multiplying row 2 by negative 10 and adding it to row 3. So that gives us a 0. It gives us a 0 in the second position, which was the reason why we were doing that. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20, plus 20 is 0. 0 times negative 10 is 0, plus 3 is 3. And then negative 1 times negative 10 is positive 10, plus 8 is 18. 
So we've got our leading entry in the first row, set with the zeros underneath it. We've got our leading entry in the second row, set with the zeros underneath it. Where's our next leading entry? Well, the next leading entry is this three, which is again to the right of the leading entry of the row above it, so that checks out. And since there are no entries below that leading entry, then that satisfies the condition that anything below that leading entry has to be a zero. So this matrix is now in echelon form. Let's talk about a little bit more terminology. When a matrix is in echelon form, the leading entry of each row in that matrix is called a pivot. So in the previous example, we had three rows, each with a leading entry, and so the leading entry in, the, in each of those rows is called a pivot. We had three pivots. So even though matrices can have different echelon forms, we could have done the row reduction process that we just did. We could have done the steps in a different order. We might have gotten a slightly different looking echelon form. What wouldn't have been different is the locations of the pivots. The pivots will always be in the same places. And another piece of terminology, any column that contains a pivot is called a pivot column. So in the previous example, there were pivots in the first, second, and fourth columns. And so columns one, two, and four of that matrix are called pivot columns. So here's the basic row reduction process that we just followed. I'm going to start by beginning with the first non-zero column. That's a pivot column, and the pivot position is going to be at the top. So if there isn't already a non-zero number there, you want to swap your rows to get a non-zero into that pivot position. And then use the replacement operation, just like we did in the previous example, to create zeros in all of the positions below that pivot. Move on to the next pivot column and repeat this process. So let's do another example. So the first column is not all zeros, which means it is a pivot column, and that means that this first position is going to be a pivot. The number in that position is not zero, so that's good, and so we leave it there. We don't have to do any swapping. So now we're going to do replacement operations to change all of the numbers underneath that one. We want to change all of those numbers to zeros. Now typically the way that we'll do this in practice is we'll do multiple operations all at once. So we're going to do three replacement operations. So we're going to replace row 2, we're going to replace row 3, and we're going to replace row 4. So that the matrix that I end up with eventually, row 1 isn't going to change, it's still going to be 1, 4, 8, but there's going to be a 0 here, a 0 here, and a 0 here. That's my goal. Okay, so what do I need to replace row 2 by to get there to be that 0? I want to use row 1, I want to use this pivot to make those zeros happen. So I'm going to replace row 2 by row 2 plus negative 2 times row 1. Negative 2 times that 1 will be negative 2, and so that when I add, I'll get a 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0, check. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 8 is 0. And negative 2 times 8 is negative 16, plus negative 1 is negative 17. In the next row, again, same idea. I want to use row 1 to eliminate that negative 3 and turn that into a 0. So I'm going to do that by multiplying by 3 and adding. Because 3 times 1 is positive 3, add that to the negative 3, you get 0. In the next column, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 0 is 12. And 3 times 8 is 24, plus 0 is 24. Finally, row 4 has a 1, which means I want to replace row 4 by row 4 plus negative 1 times row 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus negative 4 is negative 8. Just got to be careful with your negatives there. And then negative 1 times 8 is negative 8, plus 16 is 8. So that's what our matrix looks like now. So we've got our leading entry in the first row. The leading entry in the second row now, now we've got a problem. Because the leading entry over here is in the third column. But the leading entry in the row below that is in the second column. And that's not going to fit with our echelon form. Remember that the leading entries have to go down and to the right. And so what we need to do to get this to, to work out, that's not going to be good, is we're going to do a swap. We're going to swap rows 2 and 3. So that doesn't change row 1. We've still got 1, 4, 8. Now row 2 is now... 0, 12, 24, then we have 0, 0, negative 17, and then we have 0, negative 8, 8. So now our leading entry is 1, 
and 12. So now that we've identified our next leading entry, we need to make sure that everything below that leading entry is a zero. We've already got a zero in row three, but we need to get a zero in row four. So we've got a 12 and we want a negative eight. So rather than think about fractions here, it might just be easier to take that 12, that row with the 12 in it, and just divide that row by 12. This is an optional step, but it does make the arithmetic a little bit easier because it means we don't have to, to worry about fractions. So divide row two by 12, that's gonna give us one, four, eight, zero, one, two, zero, zero, negative 17, zero, negative eight, eight. Another reason why this is a decent idea here is that 24 divided by 12 is a nice number. That's also not going to give us any fractions. So it's a good idea if you've got sort of a weird number in your uh, pivot position to maybe divide that whole row by that number. And that'll actually be a step that we'll do a little later on when we start talking about reduced echelon form. So now what we're going to do is replace row 4 by row 4 plus 8 times row 2. Now that we've got a 1 in that leading entry position, multiplying that by 8 will give us 8, which cancels out the negative 8 when we add. So our first row is still 1, 4, 8. Our second row is still 0, 1, 2. Third row is still 0, 0, negative 17. Fourth row still has a 0 in the first entry. Multiplying by 8 and adding gives us a 0 in the second entry. And then 2 times 8 is 16. 16 plus 8 is 24. Now we're almost done here. Again, our leading entries are this one here, this one here, and now this negative 17. The last thing that we need to do is make sure that everything below that negative 17 is a zero, which we can do by another replacement operation. So since 17 is a little bit of a yucky number, what we can do again is to divide row three by negative 17. But just to show you what you would do if you didn't want to do that, if you just wanted to leave it as a negative 17, we have to think about, okay, what do we have to multiply that by? So we're going to have to multiply 17, negative 17 by something. And then when we add that to 24, we want to get 0. That's, what we're, that's the idea, right? So we want to multiply row 3 by something and then add that to row 4 so that we get that negative tw uh, the, the 24 to cancel out. So that means that we the negative 17, the mystery number that we're looking for, we want that to work out to be negative 24. So the mystery number that we're working for is negative 24 over 17, which is 24 over 17. So we want to replace row 4 by row 4 plus 24 over 17 times row 3. 1, 4, 8, 0, 1, 2. This doesn't change anything but row 4. And when we multiply negative 17 by 24 over 17, we get negative 24. And when we add, we get zeros. So like I said, it's, it's up to you. So in these kinds of situations, if you want to just divide to get rid of the number so that you don't have to worry about fractions, that's an option. Sometimes you can't avoid the fractions because when you divide through a row, um, sometimes the rest of the things in the row still turn into fractions. So sometimes fractions are unavoidable, but in this case, they, we could have done it to avoid the fractions. So whatever works for you. But this gives us our echelon form. And again, as we've said, the echelon form isn't necessarily unique. So if we had decided... Two mul divide that row by negative 17, we would have had a 1 as that third pivot. So that's why those echelon forms can be different. All right, so I've mentioned reduced echelon form a couple times. Let's refresh our memory on what that is. Remember that the first three criteria are the same as the criteria for echelon form, and that there are two additional criteria where the leading entries have to all be 1, and so we're going to have to do that dividing step that we were just talking about. And then for step number 5, the leading one is the only non-zero entry in this column. Or in other words, we need to make sure that the numbers above and below each of those pivots is a zero. So the only thing this changes about our process is it changes the replacement step. So for once we get to step number three, once we've identified the pivot, we'll have to use the scaling operation to make that pivot equal one. So if the leading entry that we have is, say, a five, we'll need to use a scaling operation to divide that row by five. If the pivot that we have is 1 half, we'll have to multiply that row by 2 to turn the 1 half into a 1. And then once we use, uh, get the pivot to be a 1, we have to use the replacement operations to create zeros in all positions above and below, not just below, but above and below the pivot. 
So let's do one more example, and this time we'll work to get our matrix into reduced echelon form. So our first pivot is going to be in this first position in the first column. Good news, it's already a 1. So just like we did before, we're going to use that pivot to turn the 4 and the 6 there into zeros. So our operations will be to replace row 2 by row 2 plus negative 4 times row 1. And at the same time, just to save ourselves some writing too much, we'll want to replace row 3 by row 3 plus negative 6 times row 1. None of these operations are going to change row 1. Multiplying row 1 by negative 4 and adding is going to give us a 0. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, plus 5 is negative 3. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, plus 6 is negative 6. And negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, plus 7 is negative 9. When we multiply by negative 6 and add, we get a 0. That's why we chose to multiply by negative 6. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, plus 7 is negative 5. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18, plus 8 is negative 10. And negative 6 times 4 is negative 24, plus 9 is negative 15. Okay, so we've got our first leading entry, our first pivot, with zeros above and below. Now we move on to the next row, the next column. In the next column, our first leading entry in the second row currently is a negative 3. So before we do any replacement operations, we're going to use a scaling operation to turn that negative 3 into a 1, which means we're going to divide row, th row 2 by negative 3. That's going to give us 1, 2, 3, 4. We're not changing row 1. We are changing row 2. That's going to make that 1, 2, 3. And we're also not changing row 3. Not yet, anyway. So we've got our pivots. And now we need to make sure that there are zeros above and below that pivot. So it's similar to the replacement operations that we did before, but this time we're looking above and below to make sure that that 1 is the only non-zero entry in that column. So we're going to replace row 1 by row 1 plus negative 2 times row 2. That'll cancel out and give us a 0. And we want to replace row 3 by row 3 plus 5 times row 2. That will cancel out the negative 5 and give us a 0. So this won't change the first column. It won't change the second row, but it will change the first row and the, and the third row. So multiplying row 2 by negative 2 gives us negative 2, negative 4, and negative 6, which give us a 0, negative 1, and negative 2. And then multiplying row 2 by 5 gives us 0, 5, 10, 15, and when we add, we get zeros all the way across. So that means that there are no more pivots. We don't have any more rows in which to find leading entries, because now the third row is all zeros, and so this matrix is in reduced echelon form. It only has two pivots in the first and second columns.